Hello, my secret math tutor here, and today we're going to go ahead and find the domain for the composition of two functions. Now, remember that the composition is where you take one function and put it inside of the other, and what you get is an entirely new function. So, one question you might have is, well, what does that do to the inputs we are now allowed to put in there? Well, that's exactly what we want to find out, too. So, for this, I want to imagine, say, putting function g inside of f. So imagine, okay, what will happen when I look at f of g of x? Well, if we look at our alternate notation, we can see that any input that we give this new function must go through g first. And when g is done with it, then f will take care of it. So if you want to take a look at things schematically, it looks kind of like this. First, our inputs will go into our function g, it will take care of it, spit an output out, then that's going to go into f, and then that's going to create some sort of output. So essentially we need to look at the domain and range for both g and f. Let's take this bit by bit. First, what is the domain of just g by itself? What things can it handle? Well, since it's just x squared plus 1, it can handle all real numbers. So between negative infinity and infinity, that would be an input into g. Now let's see, since it is x squared plus 1, it's going to produce values that are between 1 and infinity. So this is the range of g. All right? Now let's go ahead and take a look at the domain of f. Well, since f has this square root, it can only handle values from 1 to infinity. Anything less than 1, and we'll get a negative underneath that square root. So this is the domain of f. All right, and of course, because it is a square root, it will produce only positive values from 0 on to infinity. So when we do a composition like this, Essentially, we have them connected like this. It says, okay, an input goes into G, that could spit out, now it's going to go into F, and that could spit out. And so what we really want to check is this interaction between the range of G and the domain of F. Look for any conflicts that it might have. Does G produce anything that F cannot handle? Well, fortunately for this one, G only produces values from 1 to infinity, and that's exactly what F can handle. So the domain of our composition is just the domain of the entire system, this guy right here. So I would say domain goes from negative infinity to infinity. All right. Now let's go ahead and do this process one more time so you can get a better feel of it. And we'll find the domain for a slightly different composition. We'll do it for g of f. So things have been switched up a little bit. Now f is my inside function, and g is on the outside. This means if we want to look at things schematically, well, things are going in the other direction. So things first mo must go into f, and then they will end up going into g. Well, fortunately, we already found the domain and range for both of these. So let's go ahead and put those into our diagram and see how this will help us analyze what's going on. So let's see, domain of f, range of f, and then we need to put the domain of g. And of course, the range of g. Now when they're connected, make sure you check the range of f and the domain of g for conflicts. Does f produce anything that g cannot handle? Well, even though they're not exactly the same, this says that f is only going to produce positive values. Well, that's okay. g can handle positive values. In fact, it can even handle a lot more. So there is no conflict between the range and the domain. So what is the domain of this entire system? Well, in this case, it is just the domain of f.
and there you go. So anytime you're looking for the domain of the composition, always check out the inner workings of this composition to see if anything uh, breaks down. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.